The team had fossil teeth and bone fragments from 17 individuals, but no skeleton. Enough evidence to announce a major discovery, but not enough to shed much light on the creature itself. We only had a collection of bones that, that I, could, I could literally hold all of those bones in two hands. That was all we knew of this Ardipithecus ramidus creature. We wanted more. The project scientist returned to Aramis in 1994 to continue the search. But finding ancient fossils out here was not an easy job. Ancient Aramis was crawling with scavengers who chewed most fallen animals to pieces. The problem we have is that a place like Aramis, most of the bodies were immediately ravaged by hyenas. And hominids in those days were no different. As soon as they hit the ground, the hyenas would have been there chewing them to bits. The chances of us finding a skeleton under these depositional conditions, the chances of that, very, very low. Johannes Haile Selassie was a graduate student at UC Berkeley. We were like 10 or 12 people here. Uh, we were sort of crawling, semi-crawling this area, um, just shoulder to shoulder in a line. And this was probably about 4.30 in the afternoon when I picked up um, a little fragment of a hand bone. Uh, which was in this gully right here. So we had to come back the next day, and when we came back, we started finding more finger bones, more than two or three pieces, and obviously at that point, we knew that we had more than just a hand. As the sediment is carefully swept from the surface, the scientists uncover an embedded leg bone. It was so fragile, you couldn't even breathe on the thing. You had to drop preservative onto this specimen to solidify it, to effectively turn it into stone. And it was in this cracking sedimentary matrix, expanding and contracting with each rainstorm. So this was just about lost. We started to think, well, maybe this tibia belongs to the same individual whose hand bones we'd been finding. November 9th, heavy, unseasonable rains hit the middle Awash Valley. Flooding and deep mud confined the team to camp. All work is stopped. More and more rain came. The river next to our camp was in flood, and it was in fact overbank. There was, you know, we're pulling the kitchen up away from the channel, trying to save the food. It took days for the rains to finally end. After the ground dried out a little bit and, and was actually excavatable, we started to dig into this little tiny hill, hoping that the rest of a skeleton was inside. The prediction here is that as we excavate through this horizon, down through this little hill, we will find more specimens. And, uh, all we can do now is excavate and hope for the best. As the team continued to carefully probe the sediments, more and more fossil bones were recovered. At the time, the scientists had no idea that this would be just the beginning of a 15-year cold case investigation of a body buried in the Ethiopian desert for millions of years. Deep in the Ethiopian desert, the Middle Awash team continued their recovery operation and more and more fossils emerged from the little hill at Aramis. Piece after piece we lifted out. We got the pelvis 
It was broken to pieces, but we got a lot of it. We got the base of the cranium. We found the lower jaw. We found the ankle bone. We found foot bones. We found other leg bones. We found arm bones. We had a partial skeleton. By the end of the 1994 field season, the team had found an amazing 90 fossil bones, teeth, and bone fragments in the little hill at Aramis. They all belonged to a single Artipithecus individual. The scientist nicknamed it Arty, a creature who lived and died more than a million years before Lucy. Could these fossil remains, now safely wrapped in plaster jackets, answer the questions that Lucy could not? Could Artipithecus help solve the riddle of where we humans come from and why we seem so different from other mammals? Imagine looking for a missing person in the vastness of Africa. A person dead for more than four million years and covered by tons of sediments hundreds of meters deep. Imagine all that and you begin to understand how hard it was to find a skeleton as old as Artie's. But the Middle Awash research team did just that when they discovered the fossil remains of Artipithecus ramidus deep in the Ethiopian desert. Hominids are incredibly rare. They were rare on the landscape. They have very long lifespans, so few of them die and end up with carcasses on the landscape. They're very smart, smarter than most mammals, so you don't find very many of them trapped in the sediments. So they're extremely rare. It was sort of a surprise to us uh, to find so many pieces of a single individual in this small area, because in the fossil record, that usually doesn't happen. These delicate fossil bones of Artipithecus now become precious hard evidence. But evidence of what? After a long and exhausting field season, the team had excavated dozens of pieces of this new skeleton. But one crucial part of Artie still eluded them. We wanted a face. We wanted to have the whole cranium together to see what this creature looked like. Within days of returning to the excavation site for the next field season, they got their wish. The upper jaw, the side of the eye socket, the frontal bone above the eye socket, and the other side of the skull were all uncovered. They were all in different pieces, all scattered around, all very crushed, all extremely fragile. If you liken it to a forensic case, it was a case where you would have to do a lot of work to put this all back together to get to the individual's face. And indeed, that's what we proceeded to do. Even as the search for more remains continued, one key question had yet to be fully answered by the project's geologists. Exactly how old were these fossils? This arty skeleton was so ancient, its fossilized bones no longer contained any material useful for dating. We don't really date the bones themselves, so we re rely on geologists to give us dates for these rocks that are above and below the, the, the fossils that we're finding. But not just any rocks would do. For millions of years, the fractured crust beneath Africa's Great Rift Valley has produced volcanoes. 